Have you ever wished you were either older or younger? <coughs> what would you consider the benefits? Don't right? tell me out loud. Write it. The problems. What would they? What would they be? Right. I am a teacher's aide, teacher assistant, paraprofessional at Terry High School. It's in Rosenberg, Texas. I am also part of the alumni there, class of 2006. Uh, it's definitely minority, um, mostly Hispanics um, and African Americans, but majority I would say is Hispanic. I don't think there's any kind of Hispanic heritage or culture in our school system aside from Spanish being taught as a foreign language. Um, if a student does not take Spanish as a foreign language, they don't learn about the culture side until they get to like Spanish three or four, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I mean, it's every now and then they'll get taught that, but it's not, it's not like history where we learn history of the world, history of the United States, history of Texas, or whatever it is, you know. Um, I feel like it's, there's, there's no learning it. very excited because for me that was my first time seeing a school actually get a band yeah. together and then like it made me feel proud of who I am because there was like a lot of people dancing in the little space that they had right there and I wanted to get up and dance but I didn't have no partner so. yeah it was like inviting was, like, to the culture like they wanted to ex like, let everybody experience it because a lot of the, the school is Hispanic a lot of students, white, black, those are like the three races, and then you have everybody else in there too. We had like spirit, we had a Spanish Heritage Month uh, here, we had the dance and everything, and they're like, they better, not be, they, better not, they better not be putting any Spanish music. And it kind of offended me because that's like my, like, that's like what I talk, that's what I, that's what I've always been learning to talk about. And so they like very offended me because they're like talking mess about how we speak Spanish all the time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I feel like nowadays if you don't act like them, they won't really Not talk to you as much. Mm -hmm. So you kind of like, have to like fix a little things with yourself to kind of make you fit in. Like, Wait, do we put our hands on it? Stop a little bit of habits like you have. Hands on it? No. So that they could like no, okay. talk no. to you <laughs> and like have relations with you. I would say the majority of students that have admitted to us being suicidal would be probably minorities. Um, it's very few. I can probably count on one hand how many, you know, majority ethnicities have come in and admitted to that. I think it's a poverty level. Um, a lot of them are tired of their lifestyles. They're tired of, you know, um, not being able to have food on the table or be able to pay bills. You know, a lot of our students, they won't admit it, but a lot of our students are um, really making it, you know. And a lot of our students that have come in and said that they're tired of their life, um, a lot of them have multiple people living with them. Like, it's not just your average three bedroom, two bathroom okay, home okay, with only three people living there. Wow. You know, it's like your two bedroom apartment with one bathroom with like six or seven people living there, mm -hmm. you know, and only mom working or mom and dad working, but you know, 
they're not contributing their money to the bills and stuff. So I think there's just, um, it's a poverty level. Um, that I think it ties up to that, you know, kids not seeing their future, kids not seeing the change and um, just being stuck. Mm -hmm. kind of forced to only speak English, mm -hmm. you know. So it's, it makes it difficult for those incoming students that are from a different country, not only Mexico, you know, but like South America and stuff like that. So I think it's kind of, it's difficult for them. Um, as a warm up, we have our kids do five minute writing every day. And it's difficult for them, especially because their language is very limited in English, you know, and so um, I think they feel scared. They're scared to be wrong, that they say the wrong thing or pronounce something wrong. Just like I'm afraid to speak Spanish because I don't know if I'm saying it correctly or what I'm saying, you mm -hmm. know. But anyway, yeah, so I feel like they're, they're intimidated. pretty bad because America is a melting pot you know it's it's from everywhere mm -hmm. you know and for a president to say that these people don't belong it's it's pretty sad you know because that those are our people mm -hmm. you know that's where we come from and uh, I think it just speaks volumes of um, what our future holds mm -hmm. you know so. Actually, when Trump was elected, there were a lot of our, um, we call them newcomers. Um, they're the kids that are from, like, Mexico or South America of some sort. Um, but they were scared, you know, either for themselves or for their family. Um, because they're either here on a visa, you know, just to get an education, or they're in transi transitions from moving from their country here. Um, so, yeah, when Trump was elected, I think they 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 were scared. And there's still kids now that won't like if there's a field trip of some sort and they have to have a parent signature, they won't get their parent sign to sign anything because they're afraid. They just don't want to take that chance, mm -hmm. even if it's an innocent trip. You know, just to go here for one class period or whatever it may be, you know, um, just because they don't want to put themselves on the radar. Or I see a lot of kids not um, applying themselves or putting themselves into different organizations because they don't want to commit, because they don't want, um, they don't want their parents to be flagged or of some sort. You know, they're just scared. Um, Although that's not how our system works, you know, but um, they they just don't know. Mm -hmm. They're uneducated on that, you know, and so they just get scared of the what ifs and what could happen, and I don't want to take the chance, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I, I think I think they are more scared now than ever. I've been cooking for like so long and I cook for seven people like, mm -hmm. in my household. And um, so like I cook like most of the time because like my mom's always at work and my dad's always at work. So like whenever it's just me and my siblings, I always have to cook for them and I always have to clean up after them and everything. So, yeah. so are you the oldest sister of the house? Yeah, okay. So do you feel like because your parents are having to work, have you taken on, like, you're their next yeah. mom? Uh -huh. Yeah, like, and my older brother, too. He's, like, um, he's always, like, uh, taking care of us and everything. But, like, I, I usually, because, like, my older brother's really not, not always at home either. So, like, I have to, like, always take care of my little brother. He's two. And my little sister, and she's eight. Yeah, a lot of our kids, especially our girls, um, they have to play that role of big sister and mom because mom has, it's a single mom, 
know, she has to go work two jobs to keep the lights on. You know, she has to go work two jobs to buy new clothes for uniforms or because the kids keep growing, you know, they just, they definitely fill that role, you know. Um, or even um, a lot of their grandmothers will step into that role for them. She's like, she's like, um, there's days where I'll play music as the kids are coming in the room and it'll be whatever that I feel like playing, feel like playing. And, uh, a lot of times I catch myself going to, you know, cumbias and, um, bachatas and stuff like that, where it's, you know, it's something to dance to as they come in. And, um, it's not only the Hispanic kids that are dancing along, but you got your white kids and your, uh, black kids and. You know, everybody's just joining in on the fun. Family's a big deal, you know. They talk about things that they've done with their family, and if they don't have a big connection with their family, they long for that connection with their families. You know, a lot of our kids grow up in homes of a single parent. Mostly the mom is there, you know, um, and they just long for that completion of a family. Yeah, they know that. Um, a lot of the kids, they will say that choir is the only reason that they come to school because they sit, they feel that sense of family. You know, I'm not Miss Shaw to them. To most of them, I'm actually their Thea. Mm -hmm. You know, they call me Thea Shaw or Thea, you know, or a couple of them Mama, you know, because I'm reaching that age of being the age of their mothers, you know. Um, but they know that that we do care for them, that we do love them, and so they they reach out to us a lot, and um, it makes me feel good. Hello. Oh, I would have to say it's definitely at this age for our freshmen, um, a lot of girls having quinceañeras. Um, I see it in the past few years. I kind of saw it die out, but this freshman group that came in, I see a lot of them continuing that tradition of having a quinceanera. Quinceanera makes you feel proud to be a Latina, right? Yeah, yeah because you're, it's a rite of passage for us. It's a rite of passage, okay. It's a tradition and it's it's that that moment of a girl becoming a young woman, you know, and um, I think it's an awesome tradition to keep. have those minorities of I'm Mexican American and I'm I'm speaking up for those people that can't they don't have a voice you know like one of our girls she'll be the first generation to graduate high school um, so for that alone like that's a huge accomplishment I think this is a great opportunity for them to do so. Um, I do see a lot of our parents um, come into that, um, and possibly students too, you know, um, just bringing, parents might bring their kids because they'll feel comfortable with them there. It's gonna help our parents be able to communicate with some of our kids and and teachers. You know, a lot, a lot of times we'll call home because you know, maybe our student was absent too many days and we're just checking in on them and they won't answer because they don't speak English. We only know that because their voicemail's in Spanish, mm. you know, and um, the next day the kid will come and say, uh, my mom wanted me to ask and make sure everything was okay. 